One thing you'll find at every summer backyard barbecue here in Florida, it's a classic game of cornhole. Now that we finally have our own yard, we can't wait to fix it up and have guests over. So when Black & Decker reached out and asked me to try out some of their tools, I knew exactly what I wanted to build. Our cat keeps feeding us a cornhole, so it was time to step up our game and start practicing. After taking some time off from house projects, I've been feeling a little rusty with my DIY skills. So I wanted to tackle something very easy that anyone at any skill level can do. I think the Black & Decker Cordless Combo Kit is great for beginner DIYers because it's super affordable, it has everything you need to get started, and it's convenient to have one interchangeable, long-lasting battery. I've been using my Black & Decker mouse sander for years and I swear by that thing. So this is already a brand I'm familiar with and trust. Okay, let's get building. Now there's several different lumber materials and sizes you can use to build your set. And I wanted to keep mine as close to regulation standards as possible, but also lightweight and easy to store away. I used half inch plywood for the top as recommended, but I used one by three boards for the frame rather than the more common two by fours to cut down on weight and size. For this project, you'll need two two by four pieces of half inch plywood, five pieces of one by three by eight foot boards, four carriage bolts and wig nuts for the legs, four large and 12 small washers, wood glue and screws. For the tools, you'll need a drill, a miter saw or circular saw, either a jigsaw or a hole saw attachment, and a hand sander is also helpful to smooth out those rough edges. Once you have all your materials, it's time for assembly. We had our plywood pre-cut at the hardware store, so we just needed to measure and cut for the side pieces and legs. Using a circular saw, we measured and cut two of the 1x3x8 boards to 4 foot lengths to get four long frame pieces total. Then we measured to double check the cut size for the smaller frame pieces. We added a cross piece in the center for stability, so we ended up with six of these boards at 22 and 3 8 inches. Once those were cut, we lined up the frame pieces on top of the plywood to square it up. You want to make sure to pre-drill your holes before inserting the screws so the wood doesn't splinter. A little wood glue here helps make it a solid bond. We used two 1 and 5 8 inch exterior screws to attach them. Once the frames were built, we applied wood glue all around the top then lined up the plywood. We used the same screws to attach it, making sure to pre-drill and countersink the screws so we could putty and sand for a smooth finish. Now it's time for the legs. We cut four pieces at 16 inches from the remaining one by threes. Then we trimmed off the corners of one edge of each board so that the leg would be able to rotate. On the back side of the board, we lined up the leg on the inside corner. Once the leg was lined up to where it could rotate backwards, we clamped it in place and drilled through both the leg and the frame using a 5 16 inch drill bit. Now you can insert the carriage bolt with the large washer on the outside and small washers between the frame and the leg and then tighten the wing nut to lock it in place. After both legs are on, prop up the board so that the back is 12 inches tall, which is regulation height. You'll want to do this on an elevated surface so that you can either swing the legs off to the side or mark the angle where it intersects the ground like we did. Using a saw of your choice, cut each leg along this line and reattach them to the frame. Regulation calls for a 6 inch hole centered 9 inches from the top and on both sides. You can use a jigsaw to cut the hole, but for more professional looking results, we used a 6 inch hole saw attachment. Finally, you'll want to putty all the holes and give it a good sanding so that it's smooth and ready for paint or stain. Before the final step, you'll want to make sure you have a clean and dust-free workspace. For messier jobs like this, we always have our cordless vacuum charged and ready to go. I chose to paint the boards in a classic black and white stripe and sealed it with a varnish to protect the finish. We love the way they turned out, and they'll be the perfect addition to our backyard parties this summer and for years to come. Thank you.